Hello, my name is Justin Madrin. I work with the Digital Scholarship Lab. My role is a GIS project manager, and I've been working on mapping inequality for around seven years now. Um, so in this video, we're gonna walk through one of our most popular projects um, at the Digital Scholarship Lab, mapping inequality, as well as some of our other projects that might be useful. Um, mapping inequality started out with a collaboration between the University of Richmond, Virginia Tech, John Hopkins, and the University of Maryland. Um, so it was a really big collaborative project, a lot of uh, collaborators involved, and a lot of people, um, blood, sweat, and tears kind of went into behind this, this project. Um, all of these maps were in the National Archives. Um, so if you've ever heard of redlining before, um, they refer to maps that were made by the Homeowners Loan Corporation. Um, and we'll get into some of those in a little bit. So I'm gonna walk through a couple slides here, um, kind of explaining what redlining and what mapping inequality is, and then we'll actually dive right into the application. And then we'll kind of jump back out, um, go to the DSL website, and I'm sh I'll show you around some of the other projects um, that we have, have worked on in the past. So a little bit about the Homeowners Loan Corporation. So you got to remember, it's 1933. Uh, FDR just took office. The financial crisis right, is leading to hundreds of banks and, and um, bank closures and uh, a federal bank holiday. About a quarter of the workforce was unemployed at this time, and uh, one third of mortgages were in default. So um, the Homeowners Loan Corporation appropriated about $3 billion to rescue the housing and financial sectors. Um, they refinanced about a million homes uh, and created the long-term um, amateurized mortgage schedule that we can recognize today. Most importantly, what we're going to discuss in, in this video um, and pertains to mapping equality is they conducted a city survey to create a national information clearinghouse on local markets, and these were called um, we call them Hulk maps or, or survey maps. So what is mapping inequality? It updates really the study of, of New Deal America. It really offers unprecedented online access to these security maps, and you see this is Richmond here. And more importantly, the area descriptions that were produced between 1935 and 1940 that went into how these neighborhoods were graded and which, which neighborhoods were redlined or not. So how were these maps made? Well, they recruited mortgage lenders, developers, real estate appraisers, and nearly 250 cities across the US. They created these color-coded uh, maps that showed credit worthiness and risk on neighborhood and metropolitan levels. It contributed to both American prosperity and racial inequality that we still see today. And we'll talk a little bit about some new studies that are being done using this data. And it's, it's known as the popular term redlining. And this referred to really the kind of the red line, like you live within this boundary of this neighborhood, so we're gonna deny you credit to uh, refinance your home or, or pull equity out. So a little unknown piece of, of what the Homeowners Loan Corporation produced, most people recognize the red line maps and, and heard the term redlining, but these all stem from these area descriptions. And these area descriptions were really forms that the surveyors, local real estate agents, bankers, local community members filled out as they went and surveyed these neighborhoods. And these are really important because it really gives you a sense of what the uh, surveyors were thinking and, and kind of some of the motivations behind the Homeowners Loan Corporation. Um, and really importantly, especially in Richmond and cities across America, is we learn, we learn a little bit more about um, some of the racial inequalities and targeting that was done um, through the Home Muslim Corporation and, and most importantly through these area descriptions. So we'll, we'll take a deeper dive into those as we get into the application. And this is what they look like, right? So they are this single form. This, there's one of these for every single neighborhood. So then in this example, this is D1 in Richmond, so the downtown kind of piece. And it's got everything from descriptions of terrain, it's got types of inhabitants, it's got uh, sale value history, rental value history, um, the type of construction, and um, I think most interestingly in, in a lot of the descriptions is clarifying remarks. 
And this is where the surveyor could write in kind of their justification for grading this a certain way. So this is a little uh, overview of all of the cities that we have homeowners loan corporation and security maps for. As you can see, there, there's quite a lot. Um, the homeowners loan corporation, like I said, did about 250 maps. Um, there's some that are still in draft form that never made it to the final stages. Uh, we'll take a look at some of those, but this is kind of just an overview map of all of the um, all of the cities. And what we're looking at is we're looking at um, some proportional symbols that are um, in kind of a cartogram form. So what this shows is, not shockingly, um, some of their bigger cities. So this is areas, um, percent area by grade. So you see, obviously there's a lot of neighborhoods in LA and Chicago and Detroit, and you can see the proportion of the grades A, B, C, and D, which we'll, we'll dive into and what those mean. Um, so this kind of gives you a general sense of what geographically in the United States, um, the makeup of, of those grades from a city level. So our director, uh, Rob Nelson, uh, who is a very talented um, programmer, as well as um, a number of other things, he did some text analysis looking at the different grades across uh, all of the cities. So he broke these down by grade A, B, C, and D, and look for some of the most common words used within the area descriptions. And this is really important and actually really revealing, and we can start to break out some patterns um, across the whole U.S. that show um, some of the common themes or, or things that, that um, stuck certain neighborhoods into certain grades. So as you see, just right off the bat, there's not a lot of words in A that are, are repeating, right? And B, C, and D have a ton of, of repeating and, and common words. And this is really interesting because as you'll see, if you get into some of these area descriptions, the A neighborhoods, they, they really don't fill out a whole lot of information, especially in Richmond. Some of them are, are pretty barren. They just say, the best people live here. That's it, right? It gets a grade A. Um, whereas in B, C, and D, there's a lot more um, text and descriptions about why it's getting um, a certain grade. So we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that. So we're just going to take a look at some really, uh, a couple interesting patterns here, and then we'll, we'll dive right into the application. So um, first of all, you see um, a prevalence of, of words um, referring to race, right? We see Negro property in B. Um, which is interesting, we'll, we'll examine why that is. And um, you see that repeating in no other grade except for D, right? You see um, this mentioned over and over again, um, as well as some um, religious groups um, as well. So it breaks it down by class, right? We see that A is upper class, um, B is upper middle, C is lower middle, and D is low class or low income. Right, so you can see some clear distinctions of class broken down here. We see uh, work work broke out. Right, we see B. These are executives, professional businessmen. Um, C. Skilled laborers, labor clerks, mechanic clerks, and then D. We have common labor, domestics, WPA workers, um, unskilled, and uh, mechanics laborers. We see types of home and construction differences. So in A, we see uh, we mention of estates, mansions, masonry, right? B is brick, stucco, veneer. C, we have detached singles, bungalows, bungalow type. And then D, we have shacks, right? Single cottages, rows, frame singles. We see a mention of terrain in the grades, right? We see a class of, of terrain where A mentions hills a lot, B terraces, C uh, terrain, flat land, um, and then D there's no mention of, of topography or, or land types. This is mostly because these are inner city, right? These are in factory zones, commercial zones. We see um, a reference to landscaping, right? The, the um, kind of the horticulture of, of, of neighborhoods. So A is landscape, not surprisingly. B, we talk about, there's mentions of wooded and trees. Um, and then C, we have sidewalks paved and then D, dirt surface. And one of the top 
words that are mentioned, the most frequent words in D is collection. So a lot of people think of the Home Owners Loan Corporation and these security maps um, about denying capital to these, these red line neighborhoods. Where a lot of times it was it was about wealth extraction, so collection of rent, collection of taxes. So this is mentioned a lot because um, it is about the 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 wealth extraction from these neighborhoods. That's that's really prevalent and uh, and important and mentioned in these area descriptions to the surveyors and and the bankers. So um, this is a couple examples for actually from our original site. We've updated this a little bit, but I think this kind of lays out some of the the uh, instances that, that we were talking about um, in, in collections, right? So this kind of um, reinforces that difficulty in rental collections, right? Uh, difficulty rental collections, heavy traffic, and again, difficulty in rental collections. And this is in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, so we'll jump over to the digital scholarship site and actually go into mapping inequality. So this is the actual uh, application here and and you'll see that uh, first what we talk about is what these symbols mean right so you can hover over things and get some more descriptions um, a neighborhood is best B still desirable C is definitely declining and D is hazardous and these come exactly there directly from the homeowners loan corporation so a couple ways you can either click on a city right or we can search so let's take a look at Richmond real quick so if I type in Richmond, um, it shows me the Homeowners Loan Corporation map or the security map for Richmond. Um, over on the left, we get a percentage of those grades. So we can see all the neighborhoods that are graded A. You can see all the neighborhoods that were graded B. You can see all the graded C, and then of course, um, we can see D as well. You get a little bit of demographic population, so you have a, a sense of what's, um, yeah, the makeup of the of the city, right? That you're that you're looking at. You can search the area uh, description. So if we want to do um, taxes, right, uh, we can see that this D1 neighborhood population decreasing because of demolition to save taxes, right? So this is um, what's coming up with with that D1. Um, and what we've actually done here is we tried to curate some of the area descriptions because we think these are the most important pieces of of the security maps themselves. So we tried to pull out some interesting ones that kind of help you dive in and, and look at some others. Um, so you can hover over these and take a look at some of these. Um, one of the most interesting ones um, is um, C7. And they say this is a respectable people, but homes are too near Negro area D2. So you see this a lot in some red line neighborhoods and in these area descriptions is that this neighborhood would probably be rated a B if it were not adjacent to this D2 neighborhood we're looking at here. Um, and so you can see just by proximity to some red line neighborhoods, right, you, they're getting a lower grade. Um, so you can see the type of inhabitants are respectable middle class. Um, and this is just a curated view. So if you want to look at the full area description view, we can show full here. And this gives you everything, right? We can see the terrain. We can look down and see the type of construction. We can see all these elements that we, we've talked about kind of in the beginning. Um, and then, of course, the, the clarifying remarks here. Um, also, you can look at the original, which we think are, is really important. So you can zoom in and, and kind of pan around and look at the original scan, right? Because this is what was, was filled out um, by, by the surveyors. And there's about four different forms that you'll encounter throughout uh, the United States. And the form numbers are here. They kind of represent years. So they kind of progressed as years went on through, through, the, uh, um, through the program. Um, one thing about the map that I would like to point out is that you can look at, of course, the original map. You can hover over all these, click on any ones you want. Um, you can um, show selection. So this is actually the fan, if you're familiar here in Richmond. And what's interesting about this one is they actually talk about that the peak has passed, which is really interesting to, to think about because um, the fan is one of the most booming places in Richmond, um, as well as May Scott's edition and um, some places like that. So um, there's some really, you know, 
um, interesting um, things in here, like better people moving out, trades people moving in. Um, so you see a lot of a lot of that that mentioned. Um, but you can change the map view. So if you go to map options up here, um, you can of course view the full map. You can view just the graded areas. And I really like this view because it combines the historical um, polygons in the, in, the, in the neighborhoods themselves, drops out the rest of the map and allows you to look at a current base map. So you can really, um, you know, um, you know, ground people in today, right? So like, oh, here's Scott's edition. You can see proximity to um, these different neighborhoods. So where we are, University of Richmond, we can see this neighborhood, right? It's really close and, and kind of um, skirts the, the university as well. Um, you see, like I mentioned before, there's not a lot filled out um, in some of these, right? They, they left a lot of this stuff um, kind of blank, especially um, if you get out to kind of the Windsor Farm area. Um, so you can see, yeah, and so inhabitants here, they put best people. So I'm not really sure um, what type of inhabitants best people are, but uh, you see they, they kind of, uh, you know, leave a lot of this stuff um, not as filled out as some of the other, other neighborhoods, which is really interesting. Um, and then, of course, you can just look at the polygons themselves. So this allows you to, what's really nice is to see through the polygons um, and look at a current base map. So if you really want to dive in and see kind of where these boundaries fall, um, you can do that as, as well. Um, if you hit the little up here in the top right, you can zoom in, zoom out, and then, of course, go back to our, our national view. And we can look at um, any number of cities, right? So we can, um, we can go to Seattle. Right, and look at Seattle's map and look at the full map. Um, where this option is really nice um, is if you go to say um, Manhattan, right? So there's, uh, as you can imagine, a lot of maps around New York City, right? So if you turn on the full map view, you can see that it's just a, a mess of overlying maps, right? So what this allows you to do is just look at the grades, right, which really clarifies kind of what's going on around New York City and, and the, that metro area, which is a really nice feature, I think, um, and allows some more clarity. Um, again, you can see kind of um, the air descriptions. We curated some really interesting pieces. Um, this was an interesting one. That this district had its greatest activity of recent years during the Prohibition era. Many of its old or converted houses were partially occupied as speakeasies and commanded very high rents from such sources. So there's some really interesting things you can find in these area descriptions and it's really rich um, data. And it gives you a little insight into what um, the surveyors were thinking. So we gotta remember the surveyors doing these, these, filling out these forms and doing these surveys were local real estate agents, people who knew the city, right? So they're not the same. You don't see this kind of cookie cutter um, responses right there there is a common form but you see kind of the the local flair and some local knowledge kind of coming up um, in each one of these so you know that really makes them really interesting um, to, to kind of explore and dive into and, and talk about um, you know uh, redlining and and yeah and what was going on in, in these cities right so especially places like New York um, a lot of the redline neighborhoods are immigrant communities right so you'll see a lot of the the d neighborhoods are um are italian or uh polish russian you know um so it's not only uh yeah there's just a wide range of 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 um of people that fall mostly uh blacks and, Af and african americans and um foreign born and, and immigrants are disproportionately redlined um, in these, as you'll see in these, in these neighborhoods. So that's mapping inequality. And this is probably one of our most impactful uh, projects we've, we've worked on. It's a really rich data source. And, and this, um, this collection is, this is the only place this collection lives. So um, you can download any of the maps you would like. So you can go in here and you can grab, of course, all the polygons if you want. You can grab any of the maps, any of the area descriptions for any city 
um, you want. So we give all of this data away. We just ask that um, it's got a Creative Commons license that you cite the DSL. Here's a here's a citation. Um, but feel free to use it. Do research. Um, we we want to give this away. We want people to use this and do interesting things. So back to doing interesting things and, and some of the new research that's going on. Um, Uh, there's been there's been some really interesting studies and more have come out um, you know every every couple of months um, but uh, this one is by the Chicago Fed um, and they were looking at changes um, in grades home values home ownership and rent um, from red line neighborhoods till today um, so they found that maps, the security maps led to reduce credit access and lower borrowing costs. They found that yellowing, so it's not redlining, that yellow lining um, was an important phenomena. So almost as important as, as being uh, grade D, grade C, um, limited you access to credit as well. And the CRA and others like it possibly played a role in reversing the increase in segregation. Zillow has done some really interesting things. They have taken their huge database and looking at um, neighborhoods that were A, B, C, and D and where they are today in their home values. As you can see, A neighborhoods have increased a lot. Um, but what's interesting here is that you can see that D neighborhoods have increased more than C. Um, and this is probably attributed to um, um, I'm drawing a blank. Um, Anyway, yeah, so it's um, gentrification, excuse me. Um, so large portions of redlined neighborhoods have lower home values than non-red uh, redlined areas. Um, Best, which is grade A, has risen 230.8, while hazardous has only climbed 203% since um, these maps were created. And Haverhill, Massachusetts is the only exception where D areas have risen more than A. Um, we can imagine this is probably attributed to, to gentrification as, as well. Um, some people have done really interesting studies. This is Jerry, Dr. Jerry Shannon out of UGA. He looked at supermarkets um, and SNAP benefits. So he found that supermarket redlining um, is another example of disinvestment and kind of follows along with current, at least in Atlanta, current redlining um, practices and, and patterns. Um, convenience stores, which are the orange dots here, um, in previous red line areas are prevalent, right? So you see that your, your, your um, which is yellow dots, the grocery stores are kind of out towards your more uh, fluent neighborhoods. And then the convenience stores are more located in red lined or C um, neighborhoods. And um, he did a study looking at SNAP retailers um, during the Great Restricts recession and how they correlated to red line neighborhoods up today. Um, so uh, that is mapping inequality. So uh, there's a lot of really important things in here and, and extra information um, in the introduction. If you want to learn a little bit more or have students kind of go through and, and take a look at some of these, there's some really good uh, readings and recommended um, additional resources for, for people that uh, want to do a little deeper dive into this. Um, a little bit about who worked on this project, so you can see all the students and all of our collaborators that have worked on this project as well. I mean, contact us if you find um, anything that's interesting or an error or anything like that. Um, but Real briefly, before we kind of close this, this video, I want to talk more about um, kind of American panorama. So mapping inequality is part of, of American panorama. Um, and this is um, an atlas, a digital atlas of American history. So we're all familiar with those atlases that we saw as kids or in grade school, right? You open it up and it's got all these topics on American history from ag production to population data to um, physical sciences, all these things about the U.S., right? You can flip through and see all the maps. Well, that's kind of what we had in mind with American Panorama, but more in a digital form. Um, and so we like to think of these, each one of these maps as a book chapter. 
So you can dive in and spend um, five minutes and get some general overviews, or you can hopefully spend 30 minutes to an hour and really do a deep dive and maybe come out with some new knowledge. So we have a, um, a decent amount of maps so far. Um, of course, we looked at map inequality and, and kind of a deeper dive today, but we have um, all the congressional elections from 1840 to 2016. Um, as a companion map to mapping inequality, we have um, renewing inequality, which looks at urban renewal. So um, kind of a, a semi-related program that um, went into our urban areas and, and really transformed them. So I, I highly recommend that if you are going to teach or use mapping inequality as a resource that you at least touch on or take a look at um, renewing inequality because it's very much related. We have Executive Abroad, which actually looks at all of the presidential and secretary of state travel from 1905 to 2016. So this is a really fun map that looks at kind of some global um, globalization, global politics and in regards to the US and, and presidential travel. The forced migration of enslaved people. So this looks at the continental slave trade, the US slave trade. Um, so it's from 1810 to 1860. And we actually map people being bought and sold in the slave trade. Um, Overland Trails looks at following um, a, a, a half a dozen or a couple dozen uh, journals of people traveling um, from east to west over the Overland Trails, so like the Oregon Trail. And you can follow them um, and read through their diaries and follow them kind of um, as they migrate uh, west. Um, another one is foreign born population. So this looks like all the foreign born population by country and by county um, from 1850 to 2010. This is probably one of my favorite projects. Um, I think cartographically it's really interesting um, and, it, and it really shows kind of, yeah, the, um, you know, how, how immigration and, and, and foreign influence um, built, built America. So this is a really interesting project. If, you're looking at teaching um, kind of immigration or, or things like that. Um, and lastly, we have canals. So this looks at all of the produce and stuff and, and goods and commodities that were shipped um, through our canals from 1820 to 1860. Um, so that, that is American Panorama. So there's a, 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 a huge resource in here. Um, and Annie will be talking about some of the, the lesson plans that are available for some of these maps. Um, but I encourage you real quick before we wrap up here to um, go to our main site. So it's just dsl.richmond.edu. Um, and here you can take a look at some of the other projects we've worked on. So we, we do some other things. Uh, Panorama, of course, is our, um, our biggest um, uh, priority. Um, but we've also worked on some other stuff uh, in Richmond, like a map of the East End Cemetery. Um, we've done some digitization of an old historical atlas. So if you want to look at some um, an historical, an older historical atlas, you can do that. We looked at uh, the fall of uh, Confederate Richmond, so looking at the, the end of the Civil War. Uh, we made a 3D map of Richmond, um, looking in the 1860s. So you can kind of do a fly through of Richmond and what it might have looked like um, then. Um, visualizing emancipation, which uh, looks at the, the emancipation and, and and some uh, interesting things around around the civil, in the Civil War. Um, you can look at Richmond then and now, which looks at a current base map and then a, an old base map from the 1960, 1860s, excuse me, um, of Richmond. So you can kind of look at those together. So that's a couple of the, the projects we have going on, some of our uh, partners. Um, so yeah, and uh, of course this is uh, the DSL. So you can, um, yeah, take a look at all of us, feel free to reach out at any time. Um, I'll provide my contact information in, in some of the story map videos you're gonna be, be watching um, at a later date. Um, but yeah, feel free to reach out at any time. Happy to talk through some of these a little bit more. Um, and again, Annie Evans will be uh, showcasing a little bit of the resources that are available for some of these projects uh, that you can use. Thanks for listening.